Okay, hello everyone, Victor Mama from Excel Moments and in this video I want to talk about group by but not just group by. When you group by maybe a single column and you're aggregating a lot of multiple columns. Okay, so not just multiple columns but a lot of them. Of course in group by in Power Query, you can easily just pick you know each of um, the columns you want to aggregate on. But if you had 50 of them, do you want to add them one after the other? My answer is probably no. So I'm going to show you a neat way, you know, to not do that and have it also reusable so you could use it in many other instances where you need it. Okay, so let's get into Excel. So this is what the data looks like. The real data was more complicated in the sense that I had much more columns, you know, and the column names were not this simple. Okay, but anyway, that's beside the point. But the format is basically the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this data into Power Query. Of course, I can easily do Alt A P T and then that, you know, gets it into Power Query. But you, sometimes you want to create your table and give it a decent name. So I may start with that step. So do a control T. All right. And then do OK. So this is a table now. Then I give it a name. And maybe in my case, I do my data. And somebody's like, Victor, all this for my data. Well, <laughs> it's fine. OK. So now we can go to the data tab and then we can do from table range. Of course, I could do that in one step. But best practices. Okay, so this is going to launch Power Query in the Power Query editor. And as you can see, you're going to have two steps because I haven't turned off in my global options, you know, for it not to detect, you know, the column types. So uh, that's why we have this chain type step. But I probably don't need this chain type step because somewhere down the line, I can actually change the type. So I'm just going to, you know, get rid of this. So we are left with just the source step, you know, which is where it reads the data from Excel. Basically, as you can see, it reads it from, you know, my data. So what we want to do now is we want to group by, you know, the vendor column and aggregate not just on A, but A, B, C, D, all the way to the end. Okay, so select this one, you know, do group by. You could also right click and do group by multiple ways to do things in, you know, Power Query. Okay, if I were just aggregating on a single column, basic would be fine, but I'll go to advanced, you know, and here I'll say, okay, the first column I want to aggregate on is column A. Okay. So I'll do A and I would say, I want to do an average, for example, all right? And then I will say A, okay? Then I aggregate again, I say I want to do on B, you know, and then I select average, you know, and then I do B. And I can keep going this way, C, D, E, all the way. But imagine I had 50 of them, I'm like, no, I'm not doing that, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> that's why this video exists. Uh, so let's do okay, all right? So, but this gives us, you know, an idea, you know, of what's going on. This is just for A and B. So I'm just going to do something little here, like a little formatting, you know, nothing special. Trust me. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, let's go again. Just doing, I was trying to be too clever. Okay. Yeah. This is not the nicest way, but well, <laughs> it serves its purpose. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So what you see here is that, yes, it starts up with, you know, this is the table.group function. Then it asks for, you know, a table, right? And then, you know, what are you grouping on, which is the vendor column. And then these are the aggregation columns. And you can see that for each of them, it's actually a list. Why? Because it's in curly braces. Okay. So you can see this is the first one for A. So what you see is the name of the column, which is A. You know what the aggregation is that led to the results, which is here is doing a list of average of you know a column called A, right? And then this is the type. This is the reason why I was like, well, we didn't need that change type step because we could do it here. And you can see that for B is also a list as well. You know, a list with three elements. You know, the name, you know, the aggregation, and then the type. So if we had C, D, E, F, G all the way that way, it would also be you know as in a list. But you can see that enclosing that. Is also, you know, another uh, set of curly braces, which means that we have an inner list here, you know, and it's surrounded by, you know, an outer list. So we have a nested list, which we call a list of lists. So it means that if we want to get this to work, we just need to find a way to create a list of lists where we have an outer list and then the inner list would be all the columns that we want to aggregate on and 
for each of them is going to be three elements you know maybe the column name you know the aggregation type and you know uh the type which is the result what the result should be is it a number is it the text is it you know date time or whatever okay so that's basically what it is so i'm going to try you know to recreate you know this that's basically what i'm going to do so the first thing is this hey what columns do we even want to aggregate on okay so that's the first thing so let me get the columns a list of all the column names from my source step so that'll be my next step so i can come in here sorry you know this is a little slow you know for whatever reason so i'm going to do table.column names so table.column names would give me you know a list you know of all the column names in a particular table which in this case would be the source source is basically my initial table as you can see this is a list of all the columns i don't need the vendor column as you probably know so i could actually drop it that's using excel terminology in power query i could use a list.skip okay so i basically will come in here and just say hey you know list.skip i do a shift down i do the shift nine that's the end okay and you can see that i dropped that so this is now a list of the columns i'm interested in okay so i'm going to rename this to columns list okay so the next thing is i want to transform each of these so instead of just having you can see this is a list right each element here is just a value but i want each element to be a list so this a i want to turn it into a list with three elements you know a you know the aggregation and then the type okay so i can use a list of transform for that you know so to transform each element of the list so i'm going to do a list you know a transform okay fine enough you know it says it needs a list that's a list okay and then the next step as you can see it says transform as a function so it needs a function so that in power query follows this syntax so basically like saying in my own case you can use anything you know feeding it with x x as you know my input and then here it says what is the function what does this transform to okay so if i say x and then the function basically takes an input x and gives an output x what do you expect this to be transformed to nothing just the same right because i'm not doing anything so it basically is not doing anything but what if i wanted to add maybe you know a string to each of them so i could do something like this here i could say concatenate it with the word underscore ag so if i did that for example you know you can see that it takes a b c d e and then it adds underscore ag you know to that this is just to show you that this is the part you know that gives you your output so it takes x as the input and then this is what it does with you know the x so that's basically what that is so now we can get into you know what we really need to do so i'm going to come in here you know and then let's take this down a little so this is the part where you know we do our transformation so what do we need to transform each element to each element needs to be transformed to a list right and at least we have three elements so since it's a list i would take you know in colibris so the colibris tells me yes it's going to give me a list so what's the first element of the list the first element of the list is whatever x is if x is a give me back a if x is b give me back b so basically x is fine here the next you know element of that list is where you do your each list dot average if you remember the transformation itself which is the aggregation you're doing so i could do a list dot average you know this is just the tricky part okay so normally as in if you look at in the group um, step here you know what you see is that oh it did list that average and then you have you know the name of the column you know like as a record here so this is saying list of average a b you know but it's tricky in our own case you know we can't just feed in the text x there and say oh list that average you know x that isn't going to work so we need to say hey fine you know we are looking at a particular table and we want you to pick the column that has this name x so we'll be using a table.column function but the question is you know what is the table that we're going to be feeding into the table.column function if you feed this table in there don't forget what's happening here you know if you feed this table in there you know then it means that it's just going to do an average of everything it sees what we really want to feed it is you know for alice when you do that group even if alice appeared 10 times 
you know, it takes all those Alice's right into one, takes the 10 A's for Alice, 10 B's for Alice, 10 C's for, uh, for Alice and so on. And that is really what we want to be averaging. So we are not averaging this source step because if we average the source step, it doesn't, you know, as in make any reference to the vendor names, it's just going to, as in average everything you are seeing, but you want to be averaging the mini tables that are generated for each vendor. Okay, so that's what we really want to be averaging. I mean, we can talk about this, you know, extensively, but here, what I'm going to do is, you know, table dot, you know, column, and I'll use our favorite confusing guy, which is underscore that most people are like, Hey, what is underscore underscore can be anything depending on where it is, right? If you're adding a column, you know, in a table and you say, Hey, cost to underscore then hey, that's that rule that could be a record you know in a list and you're using underscore that could be every element you know so in this case what the underscore is when you are as in doing a table dot group would be for each of those vendors for each one it's going to generate a table that contains only that vendor right and the uh, the adjoining data so that's what the underscore represents here the underscore represents each of those groups so if you have alice it will pick more or less like filter to alice and you have a table that has just alice you know then it will filter for bob it will filter for you know charlie and so on so the underscore here represents those minutes table so we are saying in that mini table you know pick for me you know whatever is column x x here is a variable so if x is a it means it will pick column a the column called a it will pick column called b column called c and column called d so this is the equivalent of what we did you know in the grouped step okay so i think we have this the next thing we need here is just to do i think this is grouped average so i come out here yes so third element so the third element is just the type so i can just do type number okay i think that should be all right so we have a list here three elements the name of the column the aggregation and then the type so let's see what that gives us so this is a list, an outer list, and you can see each element is now a list in itself with three elements, the name, you know, the aggregation, and then the type. Come here, the name, aggregation, type, name, aggregation, type. So this is a nested list because you can see that there is an outer list and inside the outer list, you then have, you know, as in lists, right? So which is an inner list. So that's the list of lists. So this step here, you know, can be called nested lists nested lists okay right so with this you can actually feed this into you know your group draw step of course you know power query it doesn't need to follow sequentially but yeah maybe for people who aren't so used to it, it may be good to just kind of repeat this step and say here this whole thing here you know i'm going to replace it with that nested list so i can take this step let's say i take this step okay so i come in here and then i create a next step so i'm just going to replicate you know what it is i had all right so need an equal to here so instead of having this whole you know list of lists here i can say hey i already created a nested list here you know that is what you need so i feed it with nested lists okay so see it's still the same thing it's going to group you know and the source table the vendor column and then the nested list will then give it all those a this b this c this d all that, all that, all that, all that, all that. okay and then this should be all you know right and you can see that when you do that in that final step you can see that for each of the vendors it now aggregates you know for each of the columns so you see a b c d all the way you know to p and that's dynamic you know that's basically working off you know this columns list so if for any reason i decide oh I want to change these columns list maybe they i'm only interested in the numeric columns for example and maybe you know the first three are non-numeric columns let's as assume that you know so let's say i now do skip four the reason i'm skipping four is i'm skipping the vendor column and then i'm skipping abc okay so it will start from d in this case okay so if i do this you know it starts from d if you go into you know your final step here you can see that your aggregation now starts from d e and it goes all the way so the columns it aggregates are based on what you have you know in your columns list here okay so 
Now, it looks like a lot, but it's actually very simple. You know, you can convert that whole transformation step. So basically getting, you know, a list of columns, you know, and then, you know, the nested list, you can transform that into a function, you know, a function that will probably just ask you for two things and say, hey, you know, where's the list? you know as in you know that you are interested in like which is like the list of columns you know and then they can perform the transformation you know using the default in this case i'm keeping the names exactly as the same you know and that's a function i can use you know across multiple places so i don't need to write it you know so many times of course explaining these things in videos makes the videos long the actual execution you know is very short if you know how so that's what i wanted to show in this video so i could actually then load this you know to excel for example you know and then we'll have you know my grouped data now i want to show you also that it's kind of easy, you know, in Excel, if I wanted to just do it, like if this was my data and I wanted to, you know, group this data, I could have easily done it with a group by function, right? I could say, hey, group by, sorry, let me scroll down a little so you guys have some room. And it says, what do you want to group on? So maybe this field column, right? So this is vendor column. And then it says, okay, you know, what are your values? I'll select all the rest of them at once. And then I'll tell it average, okay? and close right and you can see that we have that you know quickly so you're like hey victor why didn't you just do it in excel you know that table or the group portion you know was one step out of you know a larger transformation right so it didn't make sense after doing all the other steps you know you're in power query then you now want to come into excel to do a group by and go back into power query of course if i'm doing a simple group by just a group by multiple columns i may do it this way you know but if it's a step you know in the multi-step transformation you know i have to kind of do it in power query and that way at least i keep everything you know um, in power query so that when it comes into excel i don't have to do anything at all of course you can take this data take it into a pivot table and then you know do all of that but i like the fact that i can do it you know completely in power query and just load you know the transform data here so that's all i intended to share in this video about 15 minutes but trust me it's worth your time it could save you a lot if you have like 60 columns I did have it so you could as well okay so if you like this video please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments i'll see you in the next one